the unique art style of One Piece. You know, one thing that sets One Piece apart is definitely its art style. I feel like Oda's drawing skills are kind of not talked about enough. Granted, most people kind of watch One Piece for the plot and the world building, which, you know, that that makes sense. I can't blame them. You know, there's just so many theories, so many rabbit holes to go down. Don't get me started. But yeah, we're going to get into the more artistic side of this anime. Now, One Piece does not get enough credit for how well it looks. Its art style, like, it isn't really the typical anime art style. Not to be like that whole cliche, like, oh, I'm not like other boys. But yeah, I would say the manga art style is definitely more on the simple side, like, it just gets the job done, and what can I say? I think another thing is that the art style kind of gets overshadowed by the animation. Because, you know, when Toei gets down, Toei gets down. And, you know, I'll admit, I still get excited for when every new episode releases. And, you know, I'm cut up to the manga, so like, hey, guilty. But hey, what can I say? Toei really knows how to cook up some heat. I would also say another aspect that makes One Piece so unique is definitely its character design. You gotta admit, One Piece does its thing when it comes to character design. I mean, just the way Oda captured the whole pirate theme, it's amazing. It's just flawless what can i say this whole world whole unique universe made from scratch and it looks good i think one notorious aspect about the way one piece looks is definitely the body composition of some of the characters we look at characters like gecko moria and then characters like kaido some of them are like 30 feet tall huge monsters going through the sea hundreds thousands of meters tall it's crazy Oda definitely let out every inch of his imagination with this one. He was cooking. Not only the size of some of the characters and the difference in body composition, but also the unique features they have. I mean, if you think about it, you could really identify a character just by only seeing a portion of them. Who couldn't identify Luffy just by seeing his straw hat? Or red-haired Shanks just by seeing, you know, his red hair? A very simple way of identifying the characters just by you know, simple features that they have on them. I mean, shoot, you could probably identify a character just by their silhouette. I mean, I know I'd definitely be able to d identify characters like Luffy, Zoro, just by seeing a black silhouette of them. I mean, you can't mistake Luffy's big straw hat, his sandals. You can't mistake Zoro holding a whole three katanas. I mean, like, come on. It's definitely one of the big moves there that really took the art direction to the next level. Another aspect of the art style that I have to give props on is how they change the art direction through the arts. Actually, recently, I mean, we've seen just how changing the director of the animation team drastically changes the direction and how the anime is animated. I mean, you can go all the way back to the beginning of the anime and see just how different that looked when they had the two-year time skip. If you look back at the beginning of the anime, the art style, I mean, a lot of people would probably say it's outdated. I mean, true enough, it came out in the 90s, over two decades ago, going on three decades now. A very older style of animation, you know, that was animated on paper. And of course, nowadays, what they're doing, they're animating it digitally. So obviously, just that alone is going to look drastically different. Most animes that come out in the 90s, I mean, you go back and look at all the animes that came out, you know, Dragon Ball, the original version of Hunter x Hunter, drastic differences from, you know, the modern iterations of them. Just seeing old clips, it takes me back. Like, every time I see one, it's nostalgic. But I would say by far the biggest art style change was from the transition from the whole cake art to the Wano art. That definitely caught a lot of people by surprise, me included. You know, it was kind of getting me out of my comfort zone at first. You know, I'm not used to seeing one piece like this. But you know, it's refreshing. It's something new. And it definitely worked out in the end. I mean, we've seen all the crazy fights that happened. The animators, they were in their bags. Absolutely flawless jobs. That art style change definitely was the right decision, I would say. I mean, obviously, they're the professionals here. Like, you know, as the consumers, we kind of don't see everything that happens behind the scenes, but the choices they make really do show in the final product. And I could definitely say I appreciate that. One choice they made being the whole line art filter they use in the Wano arc. Which I'm not sure if it's like a filter or if it's, you know, some type of effect they use in the software they use. But, you know, they have a whole department that handles that aspect of it. You know, you have the key animators, you have the people who handle the CG, the effects, you know, stuff like that. And that was one of the things that really bumped it to change 
change just the whole direction of everything. Something that we saw like a lot of other artists take inspiration from, they really changed the game with that one. That was amazing. But even with Wano being a huge jump in a change of art style, I would say the change from Wano to Egghead was also another big one. Part of me feels like they kind of wanted to capture the old style of how they had it because I will say when the first few episodes of the new art style came out, I definitely noticed that it was reminiscent of how One Piece looked after the time skip. I was kind of feeling nostalgic there. Egghead, like visually speaking, definitely gives off a more like laid back, chill vibes, you know? Like it's not that serious. Like you wouldn't really expect so much going on in this art just by looking at it, you know, at least compared to Wano. But of course, when that action hits, it hits. I mean, we've seen episode 1100, Death Kiss. You can see when things get serious, there's a whole change in emotion, a whole change in the atmosphere, just immersifying. But yeah, that's just one thing. Toy really just gets down really well, just so well. I mean, the way they adapt One Piece in general is just flawless in my opinion. I mean, I don't think they could have picked a better studio to animate One Piece, which is actually interesting considering that the first animations you could find of One Piece were actually animated by another studio, yes. But yeah, the OVA was animated by Production IG, and that was another animation team. They worked on other pieces such as the first iteration of Hunter x Hunter, if you remember how drastically different that looks compared to the reiteration that they did. But definitely a huge change in art direction as we're seeing now. If you go back and watch that OVA, you'll see just how much has changed. It's insane. Like it's crazy just how you change who is in charge of animating this thing and the whole atmosphere, the emotion, everything changes. Like of course it's still, you know, it's classic One Piece. Like he, Luffy was doing Luffy things in the OVA, but like just seeing him in a different art style was interesting. Definitely something that caught me off guard. Like I'm just so used to how One Piece has been looking over the years and then even how they're changing it, you know, recently having to get used to that. That definitely caught me off guard going back and seeing a whole nother animation studio animating One Piece. Just seeing their art direction, you know, their take on One Piece. But yeah, I will say Toei, they definitely bring One Piece to life so well. Like sometimes when you read the manga, it's just so hard to just fathom how it would look animated animated but like you go and you watch the anime and it's like wow they really portray that perfectly it's like you couldn't really imagine it in your head sometimes and then you just think like how would this look you know we see fan animators sometimes do it and they do a good job of seeing some mock-ups of you know one piece characters fighting naruto characters we've seen some fan animation of manga chapters fan animators animating key moments in the manga before they even release from toei very impressive i would say like the One Piece community has definitely had some talented, talented individuals for sure. Some of which even being able to capture the style of the manga pretty well, which is definitely something that's nice to see. But yeah, when you compare the fan animations to the final product that's released by Toei, it's like you can kind of see just a difference in how someone else's imagination works. Like this person may animate it this way, but then this person has a whole nother idea in their head. And then obviously like as consumers, like as readers of the manga, we even have another idea in our head. And it's like, you sometimes don't even think about how these things can be brought to life. And it's when you finally see it in its true form in the final form, it's just like, wow, yeah, that's, that checks out. <laughs> I mean, what's crazy is sometimes the final product will be better than what you even had in your head, like even better than your imagination. And that's, that's impressive, or at least in my imagination. <laughs> All the freelance animators that come in to do their own pieces, you know, the whole team at, over there at Toei, like they really put their elbows into this thing. <laughs> now, in my personal opinion, I would say the art style is very simple, but not in a bad way. It's like, I actually think that helps the animation look so well, if that makes any sense. And this is something I've always had an opinion on, like if you have a simple art style and you want something animated, I wouldn't say easier, it's a lot more straightforward to do because there's not too much going on with the design here. You can much more efficiently transfer that into 
fluid animation. Like, I would say there's few characters in the One Piece verse that are kind of weird looking or kind of complex in how they're built, but I'll say for the most part, yeah, definitely pretty simple designs, like nothing too crazy. It's like when it comes to animating things, the animators could really just go all out and then just put their feet in the product. Like, they can just go all out. You know, they're already working from a pretty nice base, so that translates into good animation, of course. I also feel like Oda being able to draw the characters in such goopy ways also helps with the humor in the show or in the manga as well. Like One Piece is definitely an anime with such funny moments like the crew just being together, cracking jokes, doing all these weird things. It's always hilarious and I think the art style is what helps this a lot. Like just the way they're drawn, their expressions whenever something, you know, something wacky is going on. We have the classic NL face that's been turned into a meme. I mean, we know Oda can really make someone's face display raw emotion, like real emotion and have like contagious emotion to the people consuming it. I mean, I know myself, like I've, I've sometimes seen the reaction of the characters and I'm reacting the same way. And it's just like, oh wow, it's like it's so natural. It's like almost as if I'm there, like it's so immersive. And that also helps in making me appreciate the hype moments more. Like, you know, when there's downtime, the animation doesn't really even need to be like all that flashy. You know, there's more effort put in where it counts and that, makes sense obviously is being more efficient you know i could definitely appreciate that because you know when the key moments happen you know the most emotionally driven parts of the anime that's where it really starts getting good and you can definitely see that because you will see a drastic change in animation style like you'll see it go from like very wacky to very serious or like very shocking or chaotic and that just shows the artistic ability of these animators by Oda as well, like being able to capture that raw emotion, being able to capture the seriousness, like where it counts, definitely very impressive. You know, if you can deliver on the key moments, that's where the hype builds up and that's how making these very big moments that reach such a large audience, like, and he delivers every single time. I mean, we're still here well more than a thousand chapters in and we're still here consuming this well over a thousand episodes too. Like, oh geez, yeah. I mean, he's kept this entertained this entire time and that's definitely one of the aspects of it. Yeah, Oda's art style definitely is one of the key things that makes One Piece as a whole just stand out. Like just being able to identify the characters. Like for example, if you put a One Piece character in a room with other anime characters, you would kind of think they stick out like a sore thumb. Oda definitely has like a rare art style, like compared to most animes. I would say a lot of animes that reach the mainstream kind of have like an aesthetic that they fall into. Like obviously the lore and stuff is different, but One Piece really breaks that wall down and really goes in its own lane, you know? Now, the art direction changed a lot when Gear 5 was introduced, I would say. And that's a good thing. Like, I do think the way they handle displaying the positive emotion that comes from Gear 5, very, very interesting. Something that's very entertaining to watch. Just seeing Luffy and he's all goofing around, being all rubbery, bouncing around and stuff while he's in Gear 5. It looks all cartoony. It's cool. And it even changes the art style a bit. The way that Oda draws Luffy when he's in Gear 5, like, you can't help but just smile looking at him. I mean, Luffy, whenever he is in Gear 5, like, he has this huge smile on his face like sitting there with his eyes wide open smiling looking like well realistically speaking that would probably be kind of creepy to see in real life but you know it, with the art style it's a contagious smile that just can't help but just have a big grin on your face as well the animation like when he's in gear 5 is definitely reminiscent of looney tunes i mean during the wano arc we saw how they recruited animators from warner brothers to actually work on some of the episodes of when luffy was in gear 5 fighting against kaido and that was such a smart move there a very interesting decision i mean because they've really captured like the cartoony aspect of that animation style like it really takes you back to watching looney tunes watching tom and jerry watching popeye 
is that squash and stretch animation style like it's so interesting to see that in an anime like they really decided to go outside the box here also another aspect of him being in gear 5 is how he affects the other characters like we saw this dude swing around kaido in dragon form like he's a jump rope that was actually crazy and then also like when other characters get shocked or like they're surprised by what luffy's doing they get their eyes bulging out such an interesting artistic direction just seeing how luffy being in gear 5 not only affects himself changes himself changes the environment around him but also impacts the characters around him like that's very very interesting something that's very unique and it just almost turns into like this plague of cartoonishness <laughs> like he spreads this sickness of cartoon like you, you get touched you turn into a cartoon all while being like this incarnation of a god <laughs> is just so ironic like how unserious he is but then also how serious the situation is like this dude's fighting another yonko like he's doing very serious stuff but the whole time like he's can't just help but laugh by watching it and it's just so goofy watching it it's like you almost forget that this is a life or death situation like the dude was fighting kaido to death for the liberation of wano and he's just laughing bouncing around jumping all over the walls and stuff and you know the whole thing was just a riot it was a fun experience what can i say when I mean, you get so caught up in just enjoying what you're seeing it's like you forget that this serious situation was just turned into a joke <laughs> Yeah, definitely an interesting art direction. Like, Gear 5, I would say, was just such a good introduction to One Piece. Just such an interesting decision to make. There's honestly a lot to like about Oda's art style. I mean, he's a talented artist, what can I say? And just like him, I mean, I feel like there's quite a few manga with very underrated art styles. I actually covered another anime with a unique art style in another video. And you can watch this video right here. I'm gonna link it right there. But yes, if you like this video, please use all the hockey that you have and hit that like button. Also, you might want to hit that subscribe button if you enjoy watching anime related content. You'll like it here, I promise. But yeah, I'll see you in the next one. Thank you for watching.